everyone loves social media. I love it. I use it. You know, everyone loves you know Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. Everyone, everyone is on it. You know, even these days, pets are on it. Babies are on it before they even before they even born. But one of the key things when it comes to social media is understanding what people are exposing, what what information they're exposing about themselves. You know, what pro potentially private information and how that information could be used for negative uh, purposes. So, for example, you might be exposing, let's say, sharing where you are right now, but you also might be sharing where you live. Or let's say you're sharing where you live on Facebook, you might be sharing where you are right now on Twitter or Foursquare. But then an attacker, a bad person, a criminal, could actually use that information to find out when you're not at home. And they could use that to burgle you. Or they could actually use the information of knowing where you are to know where you, to, to find out where you are to kind of track you down and probably that's the classic example with Kim Kardashian where you know the, the rumor the kind of the, the theory is that she posted you know a lot of information online probably too much information you know as, as kind of celebrities do but then the problem is that people actually use that information to find out where she was and burger her just at the time where she had some really 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 expensive jewelry and they stole that jewelry so that's kind of one of the classic examples of how social media posting and sharing too much information online can actually impact us in the offline world. Well, I guess my pathway really started because I was so interested in technology, so interested in how things work. So from there, it was a case of kind of first studying IT at school, then from there moving on to computer science, then going into this area of kind of security. And I, I always kind of think back and I remember when I was doing my uh, my first when I was first studying uh, security in in university. I remember looking at it. I remember thinking, Oh, I'd never get into security. It's too difficult. It's never. It's kind of a never solved problem. How do you prove security? And then, funnily enough, these days I actually work just in that. I just work improving security, understanding how it works, and actually begin to develop systems and applications to help people better use systems, better use systems securely. So, this is a typical morning for me. I start around, let's say, I don't know, 8.30, and I like to take a nice leisurely stroll through uh, the University of Oxford, uh, through the city centre, on my way to work. The cool things about my work is that I get to travel to some really awesome places. So right now, I'm in Estonia, in Tartu. So today I'm at Cheltenham Science Festival and I'm really looking forward to my talk, Is Your Device Listening to You? It's all about new forms of technology that we have, such as Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and the real problems behind these devices in terms of privacy and security. Whilst I'm at work, especially these days, what I'm focusing on quite a bit is kind of the Internet of Things and the impact that that, that's, that and smart devices, be it smart watches, smart TVs, smart cameras, all these type of things and how they impact uh, you know us as a society. So that's one thing that I'm kind of delving into quite a bit of detail in now. Well, did you know that fridges these days can actually be attacked? There's smart fridges, there's smart ovens. And there was recently a tap that actually was uh, publicized where this smart oven has actually been hacked and hacked via apparently a text message. You know, so these days you have to think about the world and the fact that almost all the devices we use are going to be connected in one way or fashion. And that introduces a number of risks, you know, what the privacy of, you know, what data is put on these smart devices, the security, you know, if someone hacks your smart home, all these are kind of pretty significant problems that are become uh, more crucial when it comes to the future. And I think really it's kind of key, you know, people actually try to protect systems, protect applications and protect us as humans. And that's what my research is actually focused on. Well, why I think real people should get into computer science and studying computer science is because there's kind of so much interesting things that you can do and also because studying computer science is is kind of it's kind of technology the fundamental kind of underlying kind of basis of a lot of things that we do these days and studying computer science will actually help you to get into that help you to understand how applications and systems work help you to develop new applications and systems and really I mean I believe getting into computer science will kind of put you on the cutting end of cutting edge of technology it could be in working in cybersecurity where I work or it could be working in computational biology it could be working in artificial intelligence all of these are kind of the key fields that I believe will push society forward uh, and these are kind of the key areas where we definitely encourage anyone to get involved in.